200 beehives destroyed. We came to help any way we can. Tens of millions of bees now buzzing along I-80 near Promontory. Unfortunately, it's uh, probably going to be a complete loss for the beekeeper. Beekeepers from Wasatch Beekeeper Association rushing to help, but ultimately feeling helpless. And we've been slowly going through the hives looking to see what's been damaged, what hasn't, and unfortunately, more is damaged than not. It's a sticky situation that began to unfold around 1040 this morning. A semi-trailer hauling the hives lost control and rolled, sending the hives crashing to the ground. So of course there are bees just everywhere and not very happy bees. Two people from the truck were taken to the hospital with injuries from the crash and bee stings. Others on scene doing their best not to get stung. We've been telling people to roll up their windows and then we've had a couple troopers and, and firefighters that have been stung. These beekeepers say the bees were headed to the Midwest to pollinate crops, but unfortunately, they'll never make it there. As just a beekeeper, it's sad to see. Because of the crash investigation and insurance purposes, troopers eventually had to send the beekeepers away. Yeah, I see it from all angles. Leaving these millions of bees in search for a new home. I, I see the people that came here to get the road open, and I see the guy in Arizona that's on the phone right now trying to figure out what to do. And I feel for the farmer in the Midwest that's now probably having to figure out a new beekeeper to bring bees. It's a sad situation all around. We're always trying to make our officers more efficient. A drone does that. It enables fewer officers to accomplish more investigative work. You can see from our drone how it expands the terrain the operator can see. Captain Chad Betridge helps oversee operations at the DWR. The drone's going to help us uh, with our crime scenes. Uh, it'll help us photograph those. It'll help us find evidence in those. The DWR only has 50 to 55 officers patrolling Utah, and each one covers about 2,500 square miles. The five investigators with the new unmanned aerial systems team had to complete licensing and training requirements with the FAA to become certified on the drones. They are now stationed across the state making us a little quicker and more efficient. Last week, a hunter went missing in the Uinta Basin. Betridge tells me they could have used a drone on that. They plan to assist other agencies with search and rescue. Similar to our canine program, where we've, our dogs have helped a lot on search and rescue uh, situations, we think the drone can be just as beneficial, maybe even in some circumstances more beneficial. Poaching is one of the most common crimes they investigate. The new tool will help them document crime scenes, especially when it involves finding illegally taken wildlife across terrain with no access. There's things we haven't thought of that they're going to just be incredibly beneficial on. If you've passed through Utah County, chances are you've seen it. But the community says the eroding and overgrown G needs help. And they say it's about much, much more than the view. It's the only view of Little Mountain. It's just something that has always been part of our community. Just about everyone alive today has ever known. So we know when we're home because we see the G on the mountain. A landmark that over the decades has become something more for Lisa Young. Home is definitely where the G is. And the community. It just means so much to all of us here in Pleasant Grove. And it has quite a history to it. People don't realize that. Mayor Guy Fugel says in 1920, students at Pleasant Grove High wanted a school symbol for all to see. It started out as just gathering some rocks and whitewashing. The G almost disappeared in 1978, and some wanted it removed. But citizen groups saved the letter. It's a little steep. Today, we hiked the popular trail to get there. But you know what? Anything hard in the end, it's worth it, right? But the closer you get, the clearer it becomes. And the G is worth it. The G isn't what it used to be. Plants cutting through steel mesh, cracks in the concrete, and erosion exposing the rebar. Oh yeah, the G's not coming off the mountain. It was enough for young. Not during our watch, we're gonna take care of it. To push to restore and upgrade the iconic letter. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. It's no small project. The rebuilding, adding LED lights and solar panels, and transporting it with helicopters carries a $700,000 price tag. We want them to know it was built on the backs of all of our alumni. That's why they're asking for donations and volunteers. We're all alumni and now we need to carry that torch. 
to unite the high school and community around the cause. We really want to make it so it's going to stay there for another 100 years. To restore what's become part of their home. Because it's the symbol on the mountain. The mayor says they're already more than halfway to their donation goal. They expect approval from the Forest Service and then to start to get to work by the fall. Matt Resco, KSL 5 News. I started when I was a little girl. In order to get good at something, mm -hmm. you have to practice. I start with one line. And the paintings Caitlin Pugmire has created through the years. These three shows are mine. He has put in the work. I don't know, it just became a natural talent. Easy for her to say when horses most people might try to paint end up looking like dogs. <laughs> for Pugmire though, it's more the oh. act of painting rather than the outcome that's truly special. And sometimes even when I'm listening to music while I work, it broadens up an in inspiration and just lets me drift. You see, Pugmire often visits the Work Activity Center in West Valley to just create. It's a place for any adult living with a disability to do activities and have fun with others. Any way that they're able to express their feelings, their emotions, their wants, their needs is important. and especially some of those deeper feelings that are hard to express even in words, they're able to put on canvas or on paper. Like one artist who wanted to express climate change. And that's exactly what that says. That painting and the others will be sold next week during an art show to help fund the creative arts program here. Yes, these are my babies. For Pugmire, she says she's happy to do her part in making sure this program continues. All that practice wasn't for nothing. This is a good way to say this is what I can do. Please allow me to show you more. Go one, two, three, keep smiling. The keep easiest smiling. way to make friends at a national park. Hey there, thumbs up, awesome. <laughs> is to offer to take their pictures. All the pretty faces, say cheese. Cheese. Yay. It's the least we could do. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it, guys. Since many of them came from far away just to see Yellowstone. And can't. We came from Indiana, like what, 1,700 miles, so and far. we got to Bozeman and found out the park's closed. That flood was enough to dampen even the best laid plans. Totally unexpected, disappointing, but we've made the best of it. And making the best of it. We're thankful to be here, and it's a gorgeous day. Is what everyone we met told us they were doing. Still got to have fun. We've, we've taken advantage of some of the uh surrounding area here at west yellowstone we've actually seen some wildlife uh, down on 20 near henry's lake so it, it's it's still been a great trip. even though they couldn't get into yellowstone yeah. any national park fan will tell you if you take a picture by an entrance sign it still counts exactly that you were there that's right we was here we've been here <laughs> these aren't quite the memories they were expecting to have that's the closest we can get, I'm afraid. <laughs> but they're still memories. We're having a great time. On a trip they will never forget. Oh, we're having a blast. Oh. With photographer Mark Wetzel at Yellowstone National Park, Alex Cabrero, KSL 5 News.